Good morning. Good morning. I still have a voice. It's so welcome to the third day of the Blender Conference. Uh, I only have one a little remark. Uh, there is one cancellation. Uh, the talk after this talk at 11 about fabric design has been cancelled. So we moved the salon talk from about comics to this place. So everyone can enjoy it. Ah, oh, wow, look at that. Good. So it's 11 o'clock. Enjoy the next talk from the spring team. Good morning. Good morning. That sounds ex unexpected. <clears throat> I'm going to try and use my normal voice. Um, <laughs> so glad that you could make it here. Um, welcome to uh, the spring um, production report. Uh, for those of you uh, who don't know what spring is, uh, it's the current open movie uh, production at the Blender headquarters here in Amsterdam. And uh, this is uh, this presentation will be just uh, kind of a status report because we're uh, not done. Um, so just to give you a little uh, overview of uh, what it is, so for those of you who don't know, um, Spring is uh, kind of uh, a seven-minute short film that we're making, and um, we are uh, currently kind of in the middle of production, and the idea is that we, uh, we finish around spring next year, hopefully. Um, and uh, we, uh, of course, we have the whole staff of, uh, of the Blender uh, Institute Foundation Studio uh, at our uh, disposal. Everyone is really great at supporting us. Um, but the, the art team behind it, uh, we're just like four, four guys, four people. Um, so. Um, very normal looking people. Um, so, <laughs> and of course there's uh, Ton and Francesco supporting us and then uh, uh, the, the awesome developers there. Um, so the idea is that uh, for this film, we are uh, currently using 2.8, Blender 2.8 in production, which is uh, sometimes kind of scary. And uh, since the code quest happened this summer, we, uh, we fully switched to Blender 2.8 and we are using it every day. Uh, the idea is that we'll also be suffering a lot, and uh, hopefully we'll be suffering for you, so there will be less suffering later on. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, as I said, this is just going to be a kind of a status report, and I want to uh, uh, um, just keep you up to date uh, as to where we are and how we got until this point. Um, and, uh, well, I'm not going to like this, okay, but uh, so to explain you um, how uh, this whole project started, I have to unfortunately talk about myself. Um, so uh, I'm the director of Spring, so uh, it was kind of, uh, yeah, it's kind of uh, uh, came from my weird brain. So um, I'm from... Uh, I was ra born in, well, I wasn't born there, but I was raised uh, uh, kind of in the south of, uh, of Germany, Germany, very close to Switzerland and France. And uh, for those of you who know that region, it's, uh, it's very beautiful 
and uh, and mountainous. So while I was uh, while I was growing up, I uh, did um, me and my mom we did a lot of uh, uh, sort of hiking trips in the Alps, which is uh, absolutely amazing. Just the environment there, and uh, it kind of uh, deeply inspired me for uh, for the rest of my life. Just um, you know, to help me uh, create things because this impact that nature had on me was uh, was so great. And uh, as you can see on some of these pictures, it's uh, uh, what I find the most remarkable is that you you just walk up there to an altitude about like. I don't know, like 3,000, 4,000 meters or so, and you just walk amongst these huge rocks and you feel very insignificant. So um, then, uh, of course, uh, as I grew up, I uh, got to be a professional nerd. <laughs> it's super old. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Lots of hair. No, there's less hair. Um, <laughs> So, um, wow, that was 16 years ago. Oh my God. Um, then, uh, over the years, of course, uh, I uh, I got the chance to, uh, um, you know, being involved in Blender, uh, I got the chance to uh, contribute to all these amazing projects. And uh, sometime last year, there was this idea: Hey, um, Andy, why don't you want to pitch something? And um, we were uh, at that time. We were almost done. Uh, we were done with the Agent Three to Seven production, and Chelti uh, uh, and Francesco. We were doing, and, and Pablo as well. We were doing these uh, regular uh, story sessions. Uh, I think it was like Wednesday night at the studio, just uh, after work, getting together, uh, uh, learning about story development, pitching ideas to each other, and trying to develop their their, uh, their own thing. And Francesco was constantly poking me. Hey, hey, you have this thing lying around. Um, so I was. Uh, uh, kind of trying to uh, develop that idea a bit uh, um, into uh, a working pitch. So, um, and I did that. So these are some really early crappy pictures that I like. I gave a presentation at the old studio in that uh, room without air in the back, um, and. Uh, what I pitched was essentially something that uh, was based on all these childhood memories. Um, so uh, th th the idea is that uh, I wanted to tell a very simple, uh, straightforward story, no, no dialogue, um, mainly just images, something that really uh, uh, evokes a sense of awe in you. Um, so the story is about a little girl and she is, uh, she's kind of a shepherd, but we don't really know. She has uh, a dog, so the girl is called Spring, incident incidentally, and the dog is called Autumn. And uh, they live in these uh, mountainous uh, areas, and they descend into a valley that's covered entirely in clouds. And underneath these clouds and this valley, everything is frozen, everything is dead, and uh, they have to somehow bring life back into it um, by rounding up these strange, I wouldn't call them sheep, but uh, <laughs> by, by rounding up these strange uh, creatures. So um, it was really just based on like all this inspiration I got from nature and like the also, when you're a child, you kind of expect, like, beyond, like behind every rock, to some, somehow something magical is happening that just uh, happens out of reach from us. That's something we just almost can connect to, but we can't because we're just humans. Uh, so the idea with this film is that we uh, we, we show that basically. Um, so. Um, I was also uh, inspired uh, a lot by uh, by the works of Studio Ghibli, of course, because everyone likes them. Um, so uh, when um, I'm a very visual person, so but I couldn't like as a, as, a, as we decided that I direct this, I wanted to have someone else who has a very strong uh, sense of visual uh, uh, art direction. So um, I really um, I really wanted to work with David Revoir. Um, you might know him. He has this amazing webcomic called Pepper and Carrot, and uh, he is super successful. successful. And uh, he has this huge fan base. And uh, I really wanted to work with him, like um, because he was working on Sintel. I wasn't working on Sintel, so I never got the chance to directly interact with him. I really like his uh, his style because it's somewhere 
uh, in this weird mixture of French anime, kind of European stuff. You can't call it manga or anime because it's not Japanese, of course. But um, but yeah, so I really wanted to work with him to uh, to find the style of this film. So. Uh, we, uh, we got the chance to collaborate uh, for one week. I was invited to his studio, uh, to his house in France, and uh, we wanted to come up with uh, what is the main character about, like what, what does this girl look like? Because I, at this point I had no idea, I wanted to have it a blank slate. So we spent a week trying to, uh, he was like amazing, he was drawing so many, so many little sketches, and at some point he just had, uh, he had the picture of the character there. And it was amazing because, like, it's something that I I couldn't imagine that just happened to be there, and it was perfect. So um, uh, these are just some some videos that I shot. So in this week, um, we uh, he was on the first day he was just drawing uh, with uh, with uh, watercolors and and ink, and then he immediately just went uh, into Krita because that's his his whole workflow with open source uh, using uh, open source tools and digital art. So uh, at, I, was, <laughs> I was trying to keep up with him all the time because uh, at this point the story wasn't fleshed out and everything. So I, I, uh, I spent some time drawing little storyboards and post-it notes and slapping them on the wall, um, which was really great because you can, you, know, you can interchange ideas really, really quickly. And he was just like sitting in the other corner of the room and drawing these amazing things. Like, after, after 10 minutes, you'd see this thing on a piece of paper, and it's like, wow, damn it, I suck. <laughs> so, um, so that was really cool, and at the end of the, at the, end of the week, uh, we had some idea of how, uh, how the spring person is, and the idea is that she looks kind of like a girl of uh, 11 years old, 11, 13 years, but she could be much older. Um, and then also there was the design of the dog, which is, I think, based on a dog uh, he and his uh, 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 girlfriend know. It's like, uh, how do you call it? Um, it escaped me just now. Anyway, he was drawing these storyboards uh, in Krita really, really quickly, and uh, that kind of also influenced the production process. So here are some of the artworks that he made. This one over there was, like, was the first one that he had, and it was like, oh my god, that's what the whole story is about. It's this weird, uh, it's this weird fantasy world, but that also doesn't look like pure fantasy, because uh, like, going back to my inspiration from, from my youth, I wanted to create a world that's, uh, that's really deep uh, and, and rich and detailed because uh, if it just looks cartoony, there might be some disconnect between us and, and what you see on the screen. So I wanted the, the viewer to be uh, deeply immersed and uh, in, into this world. Um, these are the character sketches. Um, and uh, yeah, it's this, it's this mixture between, uh, between stylized and, uh, and sort of some, some level of realism. <clears throat> These are some some sketches that were uh, that worked worked on later on, but Julian knows the pain. They got discarded. Uh, we even modeled some of these. Uh, <laughs> um, as the story, um, of course, after that week, I went back uh, to Amsterdam and we uh, we continued refining the story. I uh, I uh, went into several attempts of uh, uh, making an anima animatic of the film, which took a bit more time. Um, and then uh, we were already building sets, so uh, as as more and more artworks were coming together, we would uh, we would piece by piece get a, a better picture of this world that we're, we were going to make, and also the character in it. Um, yeah. So how did we uh, manage to translate his amazing art style into 3D, which is really a challenge in itself because we're not making a flat 2D film. So for that, I would like to call Julian, our amazing character sculptor, artist, slash genius. <laughs> so, hello. Uh, my name is Julian Kasper. You might know me for a while. Uh, and let's talk a bit about the design of Spring and like the characters in general. So. Um, I've been mainly I've mainly come on board as the character designer early on. So um, when I when I joined the project, there were like all these concepts of David Prevoir, and we had a good starting point. But I at first 
like I specifically uh, wanted to like really. Um, oh wait, wait. <laughs> Sorry. Um, 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 <laughs> lost my train of thought. You there. can do. You I can do it. I can do it. it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> overall, I, the overall goal was uh, that it was kind of the mix of more realistic and stylized. But overall, we had more of this plan to go really into the stylistic aspect. Also, because uh, the original concept arts were like um, much, uh, much more like an anime in, in like in their focus, and we had a very theme we um, we didn't have a lot of time and we knew okay at some point we're going to do everything in 2.8 so all of these factors had to be into our consideration oh oh maybe I'm I am mm-hmm all right back up <laughs> So uh, I started with the main character Spring, and I really tried to get um, uh, to match the original concept art from David Revoir and get that uh, uh, that appeal and style really to translate into 3D as much as possible. But that was kind of hard to do because um, once you translate these details, like the this, uh, the drawing into 3D, there has to be some um, some changes. Because okay, when you look at the um, at the original concept facials, for example, they look amazing, right? And they really do. Like they convey the character so well and make her look so charming and relatable. But once uh, we put that into 3D early on, the more depth and more shading was added, even if it's just black and white without textures. Some of that gets lost along the way. So um, and that's really visible like in the first mock-up. So there it became really obvious, okay, there need to be more changes. Um, some mistakes and like uh, in the differences were more obvious. So slowly and steadily we started to go back in and make um, uh, improvements to her design to kind of remove that inherent creepiness that kind of comes in there once you put it in 3D. And um, uh, unfortunately, over time, some of the ch like most of the changes kind of caused the style to shift. So it went a bit m away from the original anime stylized to more like a semi-realistic stylized look, especially once we added like textures. And uh, this entire problem persisted, like even way past the whole rigging and animating stage. And one, even once we had like the final shots, we we're still making changes like crazy. And uh, um, it was a, it's a long struggle, uh, getting the appeal just right. And for quite some time, we've been testing with uh, different facials, trying out, OK, how does it look for, uh, late? How would it look later for the animation? And um, we tried to kind of pinpoint the problematic areas and uh, the most uh, the, the thing that stuck out to us the most are, are definitely her eyes. So we kind of made changes incrementally, step by step. The shape, the shape overall, we tried something more natural. The eyes became generally smaller. The pupil more round, less anime, and so on and so on. It was the entire what is it uh, problem all over again. <laughs> but. Um, it's not just the style that changed over time. Uh, the project became more and more ambitious. So um, the thought of mesh hair was completely expunged. Even yeah, we were thinking of that at some point. But uh, so we had to do actually hair grooming, and at least um, uh, at least at this point, the style that we had in mind was kind of set in stone. So we were able to just go more in detail. Just uh, push the facials more, find the limits of the rig and what we can do with what we have. So uh, more issues emerged and had to be tackled, like over here, like this is an interesting one, just the wrinkles not looking natural once you really push the bones into their extremes and adding more shape keys to fix those. And at this point, like we were far into Blender 2.8 and that didn't make things a lot easier. 
So um, as much as I love working with Blender 2.8 with all the new features that, they, that it gives you to play around with, um, the production of course has been plagued with a lot of bugs and crashes and broken features, but in the end we pulled through. Like, and we're still pu pulling through. Uh, like, ha like how Andy said earlier, we suffer to make Blender 2.8 better for you guys. And as we kept pushing the limits of the software, we kept imp improving spring step by step by step. And this is the current result that we have. So let's rewind a little bit because I also want to talk about another aspect. The outfit of Spring, of course, like the overall design changed a bit as well. So we got the original um, kind of sketches, speed paintings of David Revoir, and it was actually kind of funny, like I was sending him a mess as I was sending him messages like, hey dude, like uh, this, this looks awesome, but can you send me like some of your reference pictures? Like uh, what were you going for? And like he was like, okay, what, what reference pictures? Like <laughs> it's the whole magic of, uh, of uh, painting from your imagination. So I was, I was looking up some references just to get the translation right, find something that's a bit more grounded. And um, overall, I was also, I thought, okay, the, the concept is a great starting point, but let's take it a bit further because um, um, specifically I wanted some more detail and an interesting version of, for example, the jacket with more intricate patterns and uh, edges that look a bit more old and worn, like something that she would actually wear in that environment. And I wanted to experiment with some more colors and also yeah, just try some stuff out. Not really a rainbow coat kind of way, but uh, um, something more spring-like, because making her jacket just autumn colored is it's kind of weird, like it makes her stick out, but uh, she's called spring. So how do we get some spring-like patterns in this felt jacket? And I wanted to get something, try something out that resembles a bit more something like growth, something um, that you would relate to spring. So I added these, uh, the, uh, these original like yellow stripes, I kind of uh, painted them into like uh, vines or branches that kind of grow upwards and added these blue spots like kind of like, uh, um, like flowers growing from, from, these, uh, from these vines. And um, also I, ex I experimented with the staff, uh, with, with the uh, scarf, um, just to get something a bit more natural looking, something that's more comfortable around her neck, not something that would strangle her. <laughs> and uh, once we were happy with the changes, um, we went back into modeling, back into sculpting. So here's a little side-by-side -side comparison once I started to make some more changes. Um, there was also the interesting, um, um, experiment, okay, how does the thickness actually look if we get some layers into there because she has actually a pullover under her jacket. And also at some point the pullover was much more visible, but with some scrapped scenes and some story changes that and it didn't end up in the film. So went into uh, the materials and texturing and tried out, okay, how does this pattern now actually look on the model? And really interesting very uh, important for this whole experiment was to get really the look of the materials right because it's supposed to be this thick felt material. So we had to use particles and uh, get it to look as like detailed as possible for the close-ups and uh, make everything kind of look worn but also soft and comfortable. So the jacket is, jacket is really supposed to look thick and the boots overall, like they're still relatively simple, but uh, still with like enough little detail and like a de like a design in there that if you look at it closely, like you can discover something new. And this is overall the design that we ended up with for the film. So everything combined, everything pretty much done, and uh, yet I mean the design aspect and the overall appeal is not just restricted to the modeling, texturing, and materials, of course. It's, it also has to do with the animation. So let's, uh, let's take it away, Yoki. Uh, 
How's my voice? Is it, is it good? Is it there? <laughs> Late last night. It was great. It was great. It's fun. Uh, yeah, so um, you would think with, um, uh, with an animated project that, of course, it's a little bit like a conveyor belt where it's like, okay, we got the, the character design, we, got, we have to model it, and then at some point you have to rig it. And then you take that rig and then you just animate, right? I mean, of course, um, that's just one by one by one. But of course, uh, as the next person takes it over, they realize, oh, th well, maybe this doesn't work quite like we want it to, or like things get fleshed out and you just see this weirdness in it, and it's, okay, okay, this needs to go back to this guy. So there's this communication that needs to be happening there because you can't just take this and then um, go off and run with it. Uh, so you start giving feedback and, you know, of course, just as, I mean, I've rigged myself, so I know, and I've rigged for myself, for future Hjalti. So this is different, you know, you wear different hats. So you rig, and you're thinking, okay, what does future Hjalti need? And then later, future Hjalti takes it, and he's like, oh, that idiot. I mean, how could he not know? And it's a weird internal struggle. So, you know, you start giving... Uh, feedback, and uh, so it was rigged by Juan Pablo, great stuff, uh, but you know, you need to also start refining what does the character look like. It's kind of funny how that started bleeding really into like the character design and, all, and the appeal and this bigger conversation about uh, it, is she, does she look okay when you take this kind of flat manga-esque thing and then you start fleshing it out, all these details get at it, so a uh, smile looks great in 2D because like you're using your imagination uh, kind of to fill in the blanks, but then you flesh it out and you see where the curvature is. So now the curvature of that smile isn't where you thought it would be. And, uh, but yeah, so uh, you st we started uh, doing these experiments about with like, um, uh, because some of the facials weren't quite there, but I started just making these run cycles. This was never totally finished, by the way, so it looks kind of wonky, but it was just this experiment. Uh, because the, the idea originally was to have it be faster, speedier, manga-esque. So I started doing these very exaggerated moves. And uh, uh, by the way, if you actually calculate how fast she's running, it's like faster than Hussein Bolt. And like, you know, it's like, it's insane, but it like, it kind of looked okay. So I was like, eh, it's, it's fine. <laughs> And then, uh, then it's back to animating, or it's back to the. Uh, it's actually back to more feedback, and uh, we had to give more feedback because there's certain aspects that maybe looked a bit wonky. Maybe the, the some of the bones were, you know, slightly off or whatnot. And then it was time to give more feedback because there was a lot of stuff that you really needed to tweak and figure out, and and whatnot. Is that you know it's just. The point I'm trying to make is that there's a lot of back and forth that happened. Um, did some uh, facial experiments. Uh, you know, um, I noticed I noticed something definitely while doing the facials. It's um, the you know there were certain certain uh, expressions that maybe could <clears throat> didn't yield themselves that well, and you could see kind of the rough edges of uh, the appeal being lost. And so I did like another version where I was just grabbing any bone I could. And I, if you see the corners of the eyes, for example, there, they go really far and extend kind of far. And it, that may be okay, like in a 2D drawing or whatnot, but like once you flashed it out, it looked a little bit weird. So I tried another version. If you just, it looks very similar, but look at the corner of the eyes. Yeah, okay, okay. So it's, it's a little bit rounder. Um, it's shoved in a little bit, and the eye overall feels just slightly smaller. But there, it's that whole idea, you know, what is it? You know, it's like, it's an intangible thing, but it's magical, blah, blah, blah. But it's, it's like slightly better, and you're like, oh, yeah, slightly better, that's great. <laughs> so, it's, uh, so it was like a side-by-side -side comparison. Um, at, the, at the end of this little thing, it'll actually swap between the two, just so you see it very obviously. And, you know one looks slightly more appealing. Why? I don't know. It's just, you know, you experiment and you try to figure it out. Um, there was also this uh, very interesting thing that happened, and it's, it, it really stems from the fact that it was like this flat uh, character that was, was originally designed. Uh, it's, it's the fact that the face in, you know, if you had to flesh it out, the face will uh, be favoring in 2D drawing 
it will be favoring the front part heavily and it'll accidentally make this flatness that you don't see in 2D. So um, when in 3D, it, it actually started looking kind of flat and weird. And I just as an, as an experiment, I was just kind of showing the rest of the team. What if we like scaled it up slightly in the one? I mean, it looks a little bit funky, but like the point was made that um, and especially now afterwards, when we see some of the older versions, it's like, wow, like see, it looks like somebody hit her and, you know, it's a little flat. But this is like the whole process of like figuring out what works, what does not um, So. So trying to figure out like the animation style of this thing. Um, the, as I said before, the character had this uh, very interesting evolution. And as that evolution was happening, it wasn't just the character design and the art style that was like shifting slowly and steadily. It's, it was also like the story. The story was, I mean, it was definitely changing. And it had like different versions were trying things out. But there there was the sense in one version, it was like really a kind of happy-go-lucky um, girl that kind of like, I don't know, goes skipping down the valley and do-do-do. And, and that gives you that sensation of like, oh, wow, like, okay, I, I get what that is. I'll lean into that idea of like really springy and, and, and all that. Um, and then the story evolved to become more of an internal struggle and more of this, uh, you know, it's, it's, and it's totally valid and it's very interesting, but the more you make it an internal struggle and it's, it's, it's less about like that ex external thing, um, it, you have to change the animation style because you can't quite justify just doing this if it's not about that. So the animation style started like shifting more and more and more towards kind of real. And uh, um, yeah, it's, it's just a very interesting conversation that kept happening. So we did some references. This is uh, way up on a Dutch mountain. <laughs> it's, it's actually like 10 meters. Um, it's beautiful up there, like the air is really thin, but it's, it's, it's crazy. So uh, there was this interesting thing about like her having a staff. So she has this staff. And if you just want to animate that, you know, you, you hook it up to the hand and now the hand just kind of has the staff and then you start walking with the staff. But there's that problem that she's going to be walking with that staff like, I don't know, 80% of the movie. So do you fake every frame when she's hitting the floor? And it seems like a lot of trouble. So I just kind of came up with this extra bones that were there in the rig, just try to figure out, like, can I add an extra bone there? And then whenever she hits it, it's less of a hassle to animate. And then, you know, you just kind of fake it coming back up. And I did some experiments with it. It kind of actually worked. Um, and then whenever you don't want her to be holding the staff and to be hooked up to all that, you can just disconnect it and it's fine. Uh, so this is one of the earlier walk cycles. And uh, I'm very, <laughs> I like, I take very uh, detailed notes on the speed and all that stuff because uh, if you're just doing like a one-time thing, it's fine. You don't have to maybe worry that much about speed. But the pro and I knew this would happen. Uh, the problem is you start then way later, like a month later, you do something, um, another walk cycle, run cycle for just a totally different uh, character. And then at some point, when you finally see them together in the scene, one is just, you know, and the other is super slow. And it's like, ah, oh, man, and it doesn't match up. And also it's just, it's, um, it's, it's that idea of like buying into the universe if, if everything works on a relative speed. Uh, so, but she's going down a valley a lot. And you can't just take the walk cycle, of course, and just tilt it down. I mean, it's, the body really behaves in a different way. Uh, this was, yeah, like 17 degrees. Uh, yeah, I was actually taking some of the like um, earlier uh, concept art 3D stuff, and like I was trying to figure out like, what is the rough uh, middle ground of an angle. And 17, yeah, yeah, this is pretty good. Um, so I did some reference for some of the shots. We were trying to figure out also kind of who is she, and that became like another what is it kind of a thing. We're trying to figure out who she is and what does she behave like, and that's on top of the whole animation style. So this, this little experiment, we just cherry-picked a couple of uh, shots that felt, okay, I'll stop this, uh, that, that <laughs> felt like it was very um, character-defining. So this was like one of the first one that felt like, okay, we're 
trying to figure out, like, she has a relationship with the dog because she's kind of happy. Very interestingly, this is one of those shots where uh, it looked fine in the viewport, the whole appeal idea and her smile. And then at some point, Andy was like, you got you to gotta see it rendered. And she had this uncanny valley creepy smile. And it's like, oh, no. <laughs> because, like, as soon as you add all the details and everything, something is weird going on there. And, you know, and that, took, that was like a whole conversation of trying to figure out what is missing seeing in this mode, like what makes it not a genuine smile all of a sudden. But anyway, this, this was like one of those first shots where we were trying to figure out that character. Um, another one uh, was just like that look over the valley with an internal struggle. Uh, this is also why like a happy-go-lucky animation style will not necessarily work. Um, and that one works. Uh, it's one of those shots that I w want to remake and just add a little something to it, but uh, we'll see if there's time for that. Um, it, you know, and it actually, it, you saw earlier versions of this so where it kind of looks good, um, the, the art and everything, well lit. But then there was uh, one other shot um, that was also kind of this medium close-up, and uh, I, keep, I keep showing you my reference. Uh, and it's, it's a shot where she has her staff and she needs to make kind of this decision and she's preparing for it. And then she goes and smacks into a thing. Um, no spoilers. Um, and it, it seemed like a very big shot also because it's kind of longer and it has a lot of thought process in it. So uh, this was kind of the first early version of the reference. And I kind of took it from there. And I, this is more uh, body mechanics and just overall acting beats. So I made this version, which I was kind of relatively happy with. And it, it totally works. But I could also tell that I, could, I needed like another pass where I maybe went over um, some of the facials a little bit more and kind of maybe uh, exaggerated a couple of things. So I made a, a second reference <clears throat> that was a little bit more focused just like on the face and the acting and, and whatnot. Great actor, just <laughs> fantastic. He really like captures an 11 year old girl. So just, <laughs> 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 yeah, he's got a shave. It's, it's a um, and then this is, this is what came out of that. If you're wondering by the way why there are like these uh, colored markings on the staff, it's just for my own sanity, because if you're constantly holding something, both for reference and animating, um, there will be slippage. Some, sometimes it'll slip a little bit, but you won't notice because it's a long thing and the hand is constantly moving. So it's just like that visual indication. It's very helpful. But yeah, so now you, you'll see that there's a little bit more um, kind of expression going on. There's more internal struggle. Um, I think, yes, we have a rendered version of it. And this, this uh, shot is definitely out of like those experiments, figuring out who is she and what is the animation style and whatnot. I think this was the most successful one out of all of them. This was the one that get, like, where everybody on the team had like the most positive uh, feedback and, and, and uh, got a little bit more enthusiastic about it. Yeah, this is, this is the right direction to take it in. Um, but it's not all about the girl, of course. There's also the dog, and here to talk about that is Pablo. F oh, wait, no, we changed uh, no, no, no. design for design yeah. It's, it's very it's, the talk is great. It's going great. So <laughs> here to talk <laughs> here to talk about it. <laughs> wait, do you need? Um, um, I think. Can you hear me? It's good. It's good. Okay, let's continue with the design. <laughs> so, oh, there's a black slide. Okay, so, um, of course, there were other characters in the film. This one, for example, the little sidekick dog of spring called Autumn. And, of course, his design process was also not very much straightforward because, because he's basically this little, uh, this tiny dark furball. And um, 
So the biggest problem that we had to fight with this design, the biggest problems were like, okay, you can't see his eyes with uh, all the fur in his face. You, you can't really see the dog because of all this dark fur. And uh, how are we going to simulate this whole furry mess? So um, first we tried to like first make some sculptings, try to figure out the overall proportions and volumes and uh, make them kind of complement his uh, facial features and the character design and not really hide them. And he's supposed to be a bit of an old guy with like a beard, big mustache, oh, sorry, and uh, bushy eyebrows. And we needed that to be visible. So, but uh, why does he look like that? So originally he was supposed to be like, he, he's autumn, he's supposed to be older than spring. And, um, He's the, uh, kind of, he was kind of the old wise master that shows her the way, but there were some story changes along the way. Uh, the character didn't quite fit anymore, so we changed him, but the design still stayed. So, um, so even when uh, we even had like a little idea of a puppy. Uh, version of him in an opening, but uh, like we exp we ex like I expe experimented more, more with the fur and made his eyes overall more visible because we really needed that for that extra level of expression later on. Um, but uh, there was another problem. Well, let's just quickly go back. Uh, so his body proportions were originally like a bit more realistic, and since we switched the idea back to like, okay, let's do hair, hair grooming, and you saw the hair of spring, like it's, it looks fairly realistic. So uh, it was important to still kind of get that stylization from this dark character, which was hard to do. So. Um, so we kind of tried to exaggerate his proportions, just make his head uh, pretty big related to his body, like push it as much as we can uh, because he needed to match spring and stylization, but he almost couldn't walk anymore. <laughs> and uh, that's kind of visible, like if you see the underlying body, uh, uh, the balance is kind of tricky to do, but it's, it's way more forgiving once you see, once you have that big layer of fur on top. Uh, but yeah, so once we figured the body out, uh, Andy started to get into the hair grooming, get like, and it's not done yet. <laughs> this is like, everything is work in progress, of course. <laughs> so um, uh, also you notice like the hair had to become a bit more gray. Like it, it, makes him, it makes him look a bit more older like he's supposed to, but it also makes him actually look visible. <laughs> like in the later renders, especially like in the dark forest, uh, and we can't see him unless he's like, uh, if, if he's like completely black, then where's the dog? So everything looks good, good right? Well, um, well, once we have like a little animation, once we see him in motion, in motion it's uh, the, simulated, uh, the, the, the simulated hair, like without moving it, movement, it kind of looks odd. So um, this is uh, still uh, currently like a problem in progress. So uh, he could, it could stay this way that he, like the hair be stays like mostly stagnant, but uh, Andy managed to make like a, sm a smart rig for, um, for sim simulation, like semi-simulation animation for her hair. So hopefully we can spend some extra more time on his fur, get also some movement in there and make it look even more awesome. So we'll see. But um, this is the dog that we ended up with in the film currently. And um, since I already showed his walk cycle, let's just straight go back into animation. So Pablo, take it away. <laughs> Hello, I'm Pablo. I'm an animator, the other part of the animation team of two. Yes. And um, mainly on my uh, part, um, I did a lot of things in the, during the short film, but I was in charge of defining Autumn's uh, animation style. So uh, yeah, that's Autumn, how Julian said already. Um, he's um, uh, he's uh, the dog that is uh, going with the uh, spring along his, uh, her journey, and uh, yeah, he's his uh, Sidekick and uh, so really cute and uh, handsome and whatever. So uh, I would like to 
mm, talk a little bit uh, about Julian topic of uh, the evolution of the character, but I would like to talk uh, about the animation point of view of that evolution and why we decide to go for uh, the eyes, basically. So here we have a sketch of uh, David that you saw already, and uh, you saw that it's a really slice, and um, yeah, we try to work with this uh, in the early stages, so we try to go around the not having eyes, and we try to have like um, like the decisions, like animation decisions, they were more based on um, body language. So basically, he was trying to um, uh, do everything through moving the body, moving the ears, moving the mouth says, but we encountered tons of problems when uh, the shots, they were kind of close because we couldn't move the body because otherwise the head was moving too much. So we use like a small tilt and ear position, but the mouth also is not like a um, um, simple mouth that you can have a smile or you can have a sad face. So we decide to put eyes. And uh, there is something that's happened that when you have eyes in the character, you instantly connect with the character. So that make us um, uh, open a wide of uh, range of emotions that we could uh, add to him. And also we could make him more cute and more appealing. So we look a lot of dog reference and uh, there is something that dogs has that is they have um, they have a lot of control on the eyebrows and on the eyes, so they feel really expressive, not like cats, that they are assholes. <laughs> I mean, no, 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 no. So. so, after studying a lot of expressions, a lot of anatomy, we decide to um, Check the ears also. Like we wanted to have every uh, detail under control. We wanted to know how ears work because they are also really expressive and they are also part of the personality of the dogs. So taking all this information, we decide to make a facial um, library. Uh, this little facial library is really important because it's going to help us to define how is uh, autumn and more important it's going to help us to be constant during all the process. So like this, Hialti can take the, um, the dog and it's, all, it's going to be always autumn. It's not going to be autumn by Hialti and it's not going to be autumn by Pablo when I animate it. So it's going to be autumn by everybody because it's autumn. So that's really important to have a consistency and all the shots, they will look the same and it's not going to be a bunch of different uh, representation of the uh, animator of the, of the different animators. So later we did the fur version of uh, like render with fur and everything. And uh, yeah, the, this is a in pro, in, like improving, like constant improving process because every time that we find a new um, expression that is good and we like it and we agree, we put it in the library. So it's like an ongoing and bigger library every time during, the, uh, during all the process basically. Well, uh, as uh, Julian said before, um, Otton also made an evolution in the role that he had in the, um, in the story. In the beginning, he was a master of spring, uh, but we encountered since the early um, the storyboards and layouts, some problems with um, uh, he being a bit annoying. Because uh, we don't have any dialogue, so we don't have fingers, we don't have hands, we didn't have eyes. So um, he had to kind of guide the spring during the first part of the movie, and it was really difficult to do that. So uh, we decided to make a um, change in his personality. We decided to take away the extra intelligence we gave him. We make him dumber. And we make him a dog, that he is going to do dog things, he's going to uh, fetch a stick, uh, pee in a tree, or stuff that dogs do. <laughs> so I would like to show a sample example of how uh, um, Autumn was before, and you can see how he's all the time 
uh, barking or making noises, and it's something that is, was really distracting and something that we were not looking for. So as you can see, it's awesome animated. <laughs> Spring sliding. Ah, oh, there is no sound. Oh well, supposed to be barking all the time, saying like, wow, come here. And later it's, oh, look at this stuff. And later he's like, wow, let's go. Yeah, wow, ah, let's go. So yeah, it's totally what, something that we didn't want that because we've, we, end, we end up having a lot of barking and it was really distracting. So, uh, um, we had to, during all the process that we knew already how autumn it was going to be a dog, uh, we decided to tackle all the body mechanics and how he is going to move and define an animation style. So, um, the, it was something that it was kind of clear since the beginning. Uh, he was going to be a dog, he was going to act like a dog, he, is not, he was not going to stand up, he was not going to be doing pointing, he was not going to talk, so he's a dog. So, um, in the range of, and we decided to be in the range of, like Hjalti said the other day, in the reality, we tried to bleed it out in more stylish possible way, because also maybe being so realistic it was a bit boring. So we decided to, uh, again, more anatomy. Check how uh, muscle works, how joints work. We, made, we took a lot of information on a big library to define how um, a real dog do the things and later be able to stylize it as we, as we wanted. So we study also a lot of dog movements, like um, yeah, the, different, uh, the different ones that you have that they are like. Uh, we decided to get three main ones for him that they are the trot, the run, and the walk. They are the basic ones that we were going to flesh out and from there um, get the, and the, all the speed that we wanted, how much he should uh, walk, and um, yeah, the distance and all this stuff. So let's start with the trot cycle. Uh, I'm going to, there is a first video that you will show the trot, uh, trot cycle. So that's a trot. And there is like some letters below it, so I will try to explain that as clear as possible because it's a really uh, technical process, even if it doesn't look like that. So the letters, mm, the thing that they represent is like the time that each feet is in contact with the floor. Okay, I made this frame by frame, so that's maybe it's going to help. Um, basically, it's an um, example. Uh, a quadruped is, uh, has four legs. So it's in this process, we can, uh, in this trot, we can imagine that there is like one uh, biped in the, in the front and another biped, another biped in the back. So two person, one here, another one here. And uh, the trot basically is like if they are jogging, okay, but the one in the back is having the opposite leg, uh, the opposite leg in front, that the one in the in the front. So basically, see, if the front one start with the left to the front, the ba the, the back start with the right. So like this is how they balance, and how they get this kind of jogging state. Um, yeah, I, I could explain it, but it's a bit complicated, and I guess you can see it. So I guess it's time to move on to the next one. Uh, the run cycle. So the concept is the same. You have the the letters pumping up, and uh, this is a faster cycle. We have like uh, the trotty was like something in between, and later we'll see the walk is the slowest one. Uh, this is one, of course, this one is the faster, and the one the one that is take is uh, covering more distance. So we want we, we want to yeah make him run. So we use this kind of cycles. Uh, the same, like uh, you can see, like is having some uh, some um, legs in, uh, in contact, and other ones. But there is a there is the second frame is really important. It's the one that it doesn't have any any feet in contact with the floor. It's like a flying position. 
So basically, this is like what is make difference, make the difference with the other world cycles. Yep. So uh, yeah, I know that it's like really complex and everything, but it animation is complex. So it looks that it's weird just moving and stuff, but it's actually really technical, and there is a lot of um, information that we have to gather before we move on to animate anything. And from finally is the walk. As you can see, this is the slower down. It's, it's the slowest cycle. And uh, um, to say that these cycles are, we define them like this because we were feeling that it was what it was going with autumn in the style. But you can also, like for example, the walk, you can speed it up and you can slow it down. But there's a moment when you speed it up that it is going to look out of uh, context, and then you will need to make a transition to the trot, because dogs, they do it like this. So they, ju they just not like run fast, 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 fast. I mean, walk fast, 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 fast. They think that they walk, and there is a moment that they trot, and there is a moment that they run. So also you have to, yeah, there is, there is a thought that we have to make that transition. Uh, and after uh, knowing how they are going to move, we decide to go to a more complex animations. So here's a combine of, uh, it's a blocking of some of the body mechanics combined and also adding some attitude. So we decide also to have a different, a bit of different animation style than Spring. So this is more realistic and we try to make him uh, more snappy and cartoony, like this we could, he can be more like a comical relief from uh, all the internal struggle of uh, spring. So we wanted like, when you see autumn, you can have a smile on your face, at least. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, uh, after uh, we decided, we uh, made all the tests, we have already like some, these are like um, final shots in production. We find we found already our uh, animation style. We are happy with that. And um, yeah, that's how it's animated now. So yeah, we like, uh, we define like ear floppiness, like how tail is moving. And uh, that's the other last shot I did. And, uh, we are really happy with this animation style, and yeah, now that it is defined, almost all the hard work is done, so yeah, well, not the hard work, but part of the work is done, and now just we have to animate what is left. Yep, so I think uh, Julian is going to take over. Yep. Okay. <laughs> oh yeah, so yeah, at this point, I'm just ricocheting back on the stage, so, uh, so um, let's go back to the con original concept art one more time because there's actually one part still missing that I want to talk about and also use it as a bit of a, like a springboard to get into more 2.8. So uh, we haven't really talked about prop design yet and what better prop to talk about than the one that Spring has in her hands all the time, the most important thing, her m kind of magical shepherd staff. So um, let's uh, talk about this one a bit. So this one's pretty significant for the character. And um, of course, it went over some changes over time as well. Um, this is the first sculpt test I did. And one problem we figured out early is it doesn't really resemble anything familiar. Like uh, if you look at the original concept art, it looks amazing. But uh, what is it actually? Like, um, so it looks rather unnatural. And we want, like, I wanted to experiment a bit further and find something a bit more grounded. So um, we also had. Also, like there were a lot of changes uh, uh, on on top of that, so we had to change a bit of the thickness because Spring has tiny girl hands. So how did, how is she supposed to hold that thing? But um, also the big top part, like we were making early animation tests, and she was just walking, and she was constantly in danger of hitting her head with that thing. So. Um, uh, also, there was an animation part in uh, Healthy Spot where she was kind of resting it on her shoulder, and like that had to be faked as, as hell. So, uh, uh, 
So we kind of tried out to uh, Im improve these pr uh, these problems that we had, like uh, get the kinks worked out. So this is kind of what we ended up with in terms of the model. So uh, another change is like there were these dangling balls on the side, and we just removed them. Like they were they had a purpose originally, and uh, but uh, they would just be constantly distracting and a huge hassle for the animation department. So they had to be removed. And um, the design I really ended up latching onto that I found was bonsai trees, because you can grow them in all kinds of uh, uh, shapes and sizes. Like they look really interesting, and I really like the design aesthetic. And they generally have something very smooth and youthful to them. That, and you can grow them in all kinds of shapes, and, it, and they still look pretty much alive. And this all sounded pretty uh, pr pretty good for like something that's kind kind of supposed to be an extension of the main character Spring. So um, we uh, I, like I um, uh, went back into like uh, uh, the like materials and we made some more design changes. Also, we decided at some point, okay, there's supposed to be more leaves on them. We're still uh, toying with the idea of having like one or two leaves on there the entire time, but at some point you can tell it's supposed to grow into something. So um, experiment war experimented more with the materials. And the interesting part is at this point we were already in 2.8 territory. So something that I really wanted to try out experimenting with is the new look def view. So uh, this is kind of like a, uh, a replacement for the old material view. So it completely runs with Eevee. It's kind of a simplified version. And it's really easy to do uh, materials in there. It's kind of a, like a fast, uh, real-time version of cycles. So uh, I tried out texturing, and I, it worked really well. The performance was much better. It looked much better. And so how far can I push this? So I tried uh, experimenting for, uh, more, like what if I enable all the modifier stacks and then just start painting on top? And it basically did nothing to the performance. So holy shit, OK, what is going on here? How far can I go with this? So I tried out, OK, how does this look in comparison to cycles? And overall, with like. Um, the more changes were made to the EV engine to support more nodes, the more faithful the representation, uh, repre uh, the representation of EV is comparable, uh, comparable to cycles. And so I just started making all of the prop materials first in EV. And this was really useful. It was also very fun to play around with. It's very handy to, to just do all the prop and environment assets, kind of the early also look development in EV. And it's, it's like a real-time viewport at your fingertips, so why would you not use it? Um, but it's not, it wasn't just used for the, for the props. It was also used for the third character that we kind of left out so far, and that's this guy. So uh, he's called the Alpha. Uh, I can't go much into specifics. We're already going over time. So uh, he, she, it is uh, also more involved in the second half of the film, so we don't have a lot of material yet, so I'm just going to put all that on this screen. So a um, um, lot of his later sculpting process, whole material workflow, look development, that was all in 2.8 and using EV extensively. And um, so, so take this as a little teaser for more to come, but if you're like, once the movie is done and we're back here next year, I can unpack this whole rabbit hole. Uh, but if you're really interested, like there's a whole lot of breakdowns, work in progress material, and everything on the cloud. So support the Blender Cloud. It's worth every cent. Support open movies. <laughs> We're really, really over time, so I'm going to be blazing through this. Um, so as you saw, we had a big evolution in the characters, and that was all driven by the story development. And as you can see here, uh, this was uh, one of the middle sections of the pre-production, where we, uh, we were trying to do really fast iterations of the, uh, of the story development. We, um, we uh, experimented early on with uh, all kinds of tools, drawing in Krita based on what David did, and then drawing in Grease Pencil. But uh, at some point, the technology was just getting into the way, so we decided as a communication tool 
between us and the team, we, uh, we, we, we have to talk about this. So I just slap it on a wall and, uh, and, and just draw it really, really bad. Um, and uh, that changed the face of the, the whole uh, story. So originally, um, it became really, really, really com uh, convoluted and long, so eight and a half minutes. And we managed to uh, cut that down to what you see on the top here, the six, uh, the, 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 the six minutes. And um, of course, as you add more uh, animation and more detail into it, it gets longer. So currently, we're at seven minutes and 10 seconds. Um, uh, here is just a little sneak peek of uh, how that whole thing uh, kind of lines up. So at the bottom you can see what we currently have. It's not perfect, it's not done yet, full of errors and everything. And on the, on the top you can see uh, a, a, a later layout and here you can see the really crappy posted version. Um, and uh, as we're going through this, uh, we're slowly adding more definition to each shot, and hopefully we, uh, we really will be able to make this world uh, come alive. And, uh, and that's another issue that we can't talk about. It's we, don't, we don't have any more time about it. Um, so we had to make lots of things. Most of these things are done by that guy, Julian. Um, so he made trees, he made everything. Um, we have made trees, icicles, plants, rocks, and all that kind of stuff to bring the world to life. And uh, we kind of start from the layout, and then we uh, keep on adding detail and uh, shading definition, and we uh, add more, more, uh, um, more things, more environment elements to uh, to really bring the world to life. At some point, some kind of particle plant pass uh, kicks into life, and we add more grass and weed and uh, leaves. And it's supposed to be this really frozen forest. And uh, also a huge part of that is also lighting. So um, this is kind of the final-ish uh, uh, part of the shot. Um, well, there's no more time. OK, I'm, we're doing this in 2.8. We're, uh, as, as we said, we can't just emphasize it uh, big enough. So um, we benefit from a lot of the stuff that happened in 2.8. So collections are just a lifesaver uh, because all the things we had to rig before uh, into the set as we're using link groups and that kind of stuff, we can now do with just visibilities, uh, visibilities and nested collections, which is like mind blowing because you get all these kind of possibilities and that uh, really when the the code quest started we uh, we had all these sets of new tools that really um, that really just helped uh, rethinking of how we make movies in blender at the current stage we're kind of uh, almost halfway through production we're gonna have four more months of uh, work to go so uh, wish us luck that we make it um, this amazing uh, team couldn't work, of course, without the amazing team at the Blender Studio, Ton Francesco, and of course, thanks to all the developers in the Blender Code Quest, who uh, just were making this uh, version of Blender that we use so fast and so workable, and they are so open to criticism and our whining at uh, all kinds of uh, hours. <laughs> so, um, just to uh, sum it up, all of this. All of what you just saw, you can find on the Blender Cloud, uh, pays our bills. And uh, if you are uh, curious about how we make things, we're, gonna, uh, we're uploading uh, every week uh, every part of the process that we're making. So you can watch this thing happen live as we make it, and you can discover our mistakes and learn with us along the way. Um, that's just a little sneak peek. The time is over. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, guys.